For the first time in a long time, a Republican has successfully stunned us, a completely out-of-touch lawmaker choosing the gun lobby over constituents. Indiana Republican State Congressman Jim Lucas suggested to teenage students who are visiting the State House to talk about gun control that it is their responsibility to defend themselves, not his or anyone else's or even through legislation a responsibility that he and his colleagues have instead used to eliminate gun permit requirements in Indiana. And then he showed them a holstered handgun under his jacket. Just watch. You're not truly really free to can defend yourself. So, do you mean by carrying it? Yes, I'm, I'm carrying it right now. See, and nothing about that makes me feel safe, though. I'm you sorry? telling, I'm saying nothing about someone carrying a gun makes me feel safe. It makes me feel threatened. So, okay, facts. and that's facts. what this is about. This feelings? is about feelings. Yes, okay, it people is. People want to kill you don't care about your feelings, though. Exactly. That's the problem. Well, I mean, that's yeah, the I problem. There's absolutely no empathy, no sympathy. No, I'm protecting. I'm up here fighting to protect your right to be able to defend yourself against people that want to do you harm. We are back with Tim and with Basil. Tim, where to begin? I mean, it takes a special kind of person to talk about self-defense to students who are literally begging for less guns. Yeah, and also his facts are wrong. You know, you have the old line uh, that he tries to bring out about how the kids are talking about their feelings and he's talking about facts. It's not not actually right. Um, You know, uh, you're much more likely... If you are carrying a gun, if you have a gun unsecured in your home to have an accident uh, where you harm yourself or others, you harm your family, uh, then you are to shoot some bad guy intruder. Um, And so it's not as if there are zero cases of that, but just on the fact side, the statistics are much more on the side that you're safer to not have a lot of weapons in the home and on the person. And so, you know, look, I talked to Fred Guttenberg, who has been on this program, his daughter, Jamie, just an amazing story, a sad story. She died in Parkland over the weekend. You know, we're coming up in the anniversary of Parkland. And, and there is a legislative side of this that is important. There are reasonable gun reforms that can still be passed that, that frankly, even people that support gun rights believe in. Um, uh, you know, if you look at the polls background checks, uh, raising the age of 21, things of this nature. Uh, But we also just have this gun culture problem that this video is such a big example of. And we're not going to be able to fix this as long as people think it's cool to flash their gat you know, in front of kids. And, and I think that a big part of the, of the change that needs to be happened is not just legislative, but, um, but cultural and, and making sure I'm not maybe not to shame this person, but making sure that I think that these kids can sh- can in the next generation say, you know what, actually, no, this is not impressive. It's not cool to be carrying around this weapon. And, and at, at, at the best case scenario, it is a necessary uh, risk, not something to be bragging about. Basil, one student in this video said she felt, quote, all the more powerless and scared and alone after she saw a state legislature showing a weapon to the point about cultural change. Right. And, you know, despite that feeling, I actually do want to shout out to the students because think of the agency that they feel that they had to be able to go back at him and say, you are making me feel unsafe. How dare you? And I, I applaud that. I applaud students who actually get civics education in school to understand the the importance of going to a capital and, and and challenging their legislators to say you need to change the law, you need to fix this because it's damaging it. It's damaging us. It's hurting us. It's killing us. I was shot when I was twelve by a fourteen-year-old. The answer to that exchange was not for me to have a gun to defend myself. That's what this lawmaker is saying. It is there's a there's a word for this which I will not say here, but it is the most asinine thing that I have ever heard. So that I should arm myself, those children should arm themselves, that's not the answer. And thankfully those students are up in his face actually articulating that. Thank you for bringing that lived experience and that expertise to this conversation to Miller.